Ever wondered what it's like to grow up surrounded by extreme wealth and homes that rival royal palaces? For Donald Trump's kids, that's just Tuesday. Ivanka's $32 million mansion on Miami's billionaire bunker screams exclusivity, while Barron's childhood was spent on his own floor of a $100 million penthouse in Trump Tower. Today, each Trump heir commands their own luxury estates, jet sets to the world's most exclusive destinations, and wears outfits worth a down payment on a house. With net worths as high as Ivanka's $800 million, let's find out more about how the Trumps really live. Luxury traveling. Donald Trump's children have been at the center of public attention not just for their roles in politics and business, but also for their luxurious and often controversial travel habits. Since Donald Trump's presidency began in 2017, his adult children, Donald Trump Jr., Eric Trump, Ivanka Trump, and Tiffany Trump, have repeatedly made headlines for the staggering costs of their travel, much of which has been funded by taxpayers due to the necessity of Secret Service protection. While such protection is a given for any president's family, the Trump children's travel largely tied to personal business ventures and leisure, has raised questions about the strain on public resources and ethics. Over the span of two fiscal years during Trump's presidency, his family took an astonishing 3,249 trips, requiring Secret Service protection. For perspective, the Obama family took only 933 such trips over seven years. On average, the Trump family logged about 1,625 protected trips annually, a figure nearly 12 times greater than the 133.3 trips per year taken by the Obamas. These numbers are not only extraordinary but also come with significant financial implications for American taxpayers. Eric and Donald Trump Jr. in particular have taken frequent trips tied to promoting the Trump Organization's business ventures. These trips have often required extensive security measures. In February 2017, the brothers traveled to Dubai for the opening of a Trump-branded golf course. This single trip cost the Secret Service over $200,000. Around the same time, Eric Trump flew to the Dominican Republic to assess the potential revival of a Trump-branded resort, resulting in an additional $20,000 in taxpayer-funded security costs. That same year, Eric traveled to Uruguay twice, with the visits costing $97,830 and $80,786 respectively for hotel stays alone. These figures underscore the financial burden placed on taxpayers when private business ventures overlap with public responsibilities. Ivanka Trump, a senior advisor in her father's administration, also contributed to the family's high-profile travel expenses. Although she held an official government position, her travels often blurred the lines between personal and professional. In April 2020, during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, Ivanka, her husband Jared Kushner, and their children traveled from Washington, D.C. to the Trump National Golf Club in Bedminster, New Jersey, to celebrate Passover. At the time, both D.C. and New Jersey were under strict stay-at-home orders. The White House defended her travel as private and essential, but the trip sparked criticism for a appearing tone deaf, especially after Ivanka herself had urged Americans to avoid unnecessary travel. The sheer number of trips taken by the Trump family also created logistical challenges for the Secret Service. Protecting the president's children is non-negotiable, but the frequency and international scope of their travel added unprecedented complexity to the task. In many cases, these trips required coordination with local security forces and U.S. embassies abroad. For instance, the Trump son's business trip to Vancouver for the opening of a Trump hotel in February 2017 demanded significant security planning and resources. A former Secret Service agent described the level of detail involved in such operations as exhausting, citing burnout among agents as a growing issue during Trump's presidency. Taxpayers were not only footing the bill for security personnel, but also indirectly funding Trump businesses. Many trips by the Trump family involved stays at Trump-owned properties, meaning public funds were effectively funneled back into the Trump organization. For example, in 2017, the Secret Service reportedly requested an additional $60 million for protective travel, with $26.8 million earmarked specifically for protecting the Trump family and their residents at Trump Tower. This was a dramatic increase compared to the Secret Service's entire protective travel budget of $80 million in 2015. The contrast between the Trump and Obama families is stark, but even comparisons to other vice presidential families reveal the exceptional nature of the Trump children's travel. During Joe 
Biden's tenure as vice president, his family, including adult children and grandchildren, took 1,882 protected trips over seven years. This figure, though substantial, pales in comparison to the Trump family's annual average. Similarly, Vice President Mike Pence's family took only 190 protected trips in two fiscal years, a mere fraction of the Trump tally. The ethical concerns surrounding the Trump family's travel extend beyond the financial. Many critics argue that their frequent trips for business ventures highlight a larger issue. Donald Trump's inability or unwillingness to separate his role as president from his private business interests. Previous presidents placed their assets in blind trusts to avoid conflicts of interest, but Trump handed the reins of the Trump Organization to Donald Jr. and Eric while maintaining ownership. This arrangement allowed the Trump family to continue profiting from the brand, often with the indirect support of taxpayer dollars. Not all observers see the situation as entirely avoidable. Some argue that the American people elected a president with a large family and extensive business interests, knowing the costs that might come with it. Judicial Watch, a conservative watchdog group, defended the Trump family's use of Secret Service protection, asserting that voters had effectively accepted the additional expenses as part of the package. However, critics maintain that the frequency and purpose of the trips, many of which were clearly for private business and exceeded reasonable expectations. If taxpayers are funding the security required for private business trips, should the Trump organization be required to reimburse the government? Legal and ethics experts have pointed out that such an arrangement would be a step toward ensuring that public funds are used responsibly. Robert Gordon, a Stanford law professor, emphasized the need for restraint, suggesting that the Trump children exercise common sense in their use of taxpayer-funded perks. While the Trump children are entitled to protection, the sheer volume of their trips and their connection to private business ventures have left many questioning the long-term implications for public trust and government accountability. Expensive clothing. When you think of the Trump family, luxury is never far behind, and that's especially true when it comes to their children's wardrobes. Ivanka and Baron Trump in particular have carved out their own fashion identities, with wardrobes filled with high-end, jaw-dropping pieces. Whether they're attending state dinners, rubbing elbows with royalty, or simply strolling into public view, their outfits reflect not just wealth, but an understanding of luxury at its finest. Ivanka Trump has long been a style icon, one who understands the importance of dressing the part for any occasion. Her wardrobe is a masterclass in luxurious dressing featuring some of the world's most sought-after designers. But these aren't just clothes, they are investments in appearance. From delicate embroidery to custom-tailored suits, Ivanka's clothing choices reveal her ability to blend elegance with power. Let's start with a statement piece. During a state dinner at the White House in 2018, Ivanka wore a $12,888 road art gown that was nothing short of breathtaking. The gown, crafted from a sparkling silver material, featured intricate beading and a sophisticated design design that paired beautifully with Ivanka's understated elegance. She didn't just wear the dress, she became the dress. The road art brand is known for its delicate craftsmanship, and this piece was no exception. It was made for a first daughter who isn't afraid to shine, but knows how to do so without stealing the spotlight. If anything, it underscored her position of power and influence in the world of global politics while still looking like royalty. Next up, another iconic moment in Ivanka's fashion journey. During a state banquet with Queen Elizabeth II, Ivanka opted for an 11,000 $1,600 Carolina Herrera gown that was the very definition of sophistication. This floor-length pink and beige number was both feminine and commanding, perfect for dining with one of the world's longest reigning monarchs. Carolina Herrera has long been a go-to for those who want to look both timeless and fresh, and Ivanka's choice of this particular gown was a nod to that elegance. The gown's gentle ruffles and flattering fit were just the right amount of regal without going over the top. And let's not forget about the price tag. It's not every day that a dress like this costs more than most people's yearly rent. But then again, not every day is a state dinner with the Queen. It's not all about gowns for Ivanka sometimes, it's all about the power suit. At the G20 summit, Ivanka chose a tailored light blue suit by Oscar de la Renta, worth a cool $3,680. The suit was a perfect combination of professional and stylish, making it clear that she wasn't just there to attend, she was there to lead. The sharp lines, the crisp tailoring, and the sophisticated fabric all spoke volumes about Ivanka's position on the global stage. For someone representing the United States, there's a lot of weight that comes with dressing the part, and Ivanka managed to balance power and poise with the elegance that only Oscar de la Renta can provide. This suit was an investment in her role as a diplomatic figure. In contrast to the more formal, high-impact gowns, Ivanka also has an appreciation for understated sophistication. During a 2019 visit to the UK, she wore a pastel blue saffia dress that cost $1,600. While more modest in comparison to her other outfits, the dress still carried the same 
sense of refined luxury. The soft flowing design was a perfect match for the UK's cooler climate and its subtle yet stylish appeal showcased Ivanka's talent for knowing how to look effortlessly chic even in simpler pieces. This Safiar dress was a great example of how luxury doesn't always need to scream from the rooftop sometimes. It can be quiet, classy and still incredibly expensive. Another key power piece in Ivanka's wardrobe came in the form of a Partau suit worth $3,440. This tailored ensemble was worn at the Milken Institute Global Conference and represented the epitome of professional fashion. It's safe to say that Ivanka knows how to dress for success. And this particular outfit was a perfect example of business attire that commands attention while still remaining chic. Partau's minimalist approach to design perfectly suited Ivanka's clean, no-nonsense aesthetic. Every inch of this suit, from the sharp shoulders to the well-fitted pants, screamed efficiency, while the color, an elegant navy blue, offered just enough flair without crossing into anything too loud. Ivanka Trump also knows how to make a red carpet entrance. At one point, she was seen donning a $10,000 Givenchy gown that made her one of the most photographed women in the room. The dress was a dramatic, floor-length creation, complete with intricate details that made it stand out against the typical Hollywood gowns. Givenchy is known for combining sophistication with a touch of avant-garde, and this dress was no exception. The sleek design highlighted Ivanka's statuesque frame, while also allowing her to show off her elegant side. It's the type of outfit that makes everyone stop and stare, not just because of its cost, but because of how it elevates her presence. While Ivanka's wardrobe has been the subject of many public discussions, Baron Trump's clothing choices often fly under the radar, but just because he's not in the public eye as much doesn't mean he isn't building a stylish, albeit understated, wardrobe of his own. Baron's fashion is all about clean lines, tailored fits, and sophisticated choices, but with a decidedly more reserved air than his sister's show-stopping ensembles. Let's kick things off with Baron's most extravagant accessory, a Louis Vuitton presidential briefcase. While it might seem like an odd choice for a young child, Baron was seen carrying the $9,500 briefcase at just four years old. Yes, a four-year-old. While most kids that age are carrying toys or cartoon character backpacks, Baron had a luxury briefcase to match his father's. This moment was a little cheeky, to say the least, but it also showed that luxury was a staple in Baron's life from a very early age. As Baron grew older, his wardrobe evolved to reflect his developing sense of style. One of the most notable additions to his closet was a series of custom pierced bespoke suits. These tailored creations, which cost anywhere from $3,000 to $10,000, are a far cry from your average off-the-rack teenager's clothing. Each suit is designed to fit Baron perfectly, and the high-end materials are hand-picked to ensure maximum comfort and style. This bespoke tailoring not only elevates Baron's look, but sets him up to take the fashion world by storm when he's older. On election day, Baron made a subtle yet impactful fashion choice by wearing another pierced bespoke suit. This time, it was a well-fitted navy blue ensemble that perfectly balanced sophistication and youthfulness. While most teenagers might settle for a hoodie or something casual, Baron opted for the kind of formal wear that could make any politician proud. The price tag on this suit? It's hard to say, but based on the brand and the craftsmanship, it was likely in the $3,000 to $5,000 range. In a family where wealth is as much a part of the brand as the name itself, luxury is more than just a fashion choice. It's an expectation. So the next time you see Ivanka in a $12,888 road art gown or Baron carrying a $9,500 Louis Vuitton briefcase, just remember, it's not just clothing. It's a reflection of a life where luxury and elegance are woven into every fabric. Extravagant housing. When your last name is Trump, luxury isn't just a choice, it's a lifestyle. Donald Trump's children grew up in an environment where gold-plated fixtures and marble floors were standard, and their adult lives reflect much of the same luxury. Donald Jr., the eldest of Trump's children, has a penchant for grandeur. His former Hamptons estate, nestled on 3.9 acres, was a testament to upscale living. This property featured seven bedrooms, 11 bathrooms, and a design that balanced modern convenience with classic Hamptons charm. Amenities included a goodnight pool, spa, and even a serene pond. The estate sold in March 2021 for $8.1 million, marking the end of an era for Don Jr. and his family. Shortly after, Don Jr. and his partner Kimberly Guilfoyle upgraded to a $9.7 million mansion in Jupiter, Florida. The estate boasts six bedrooms, 11 bathrooms, and more than just space. It's a luxury haven. A wood-paneled office and fitness room cater to professional and personal needs, while a massage room offers relaxation. For entertainment, there's a bar area and 
pool table, and outside, a pristine pool and waterfront garden make it ideal for Florida living. The private dock adds the finishing touch, perfect for boating enthusiasts. Ivanka has always gravitated towards sophistication. She started with a cozy $4.1 million apartment in Trump Park Avenue, which she listed for sale in 2016, but later rented out for $10,000 per month. When her family expanded, she upgraded to a Trump Park Avenue penthouse, embracing a more spacious setup with sweeping views of New York City. Her transition from urban sophistication to suburban luxury began with a move to Bedminster, New Jersey, where the family expanded a cottage near the Trump National Golf Club. Later, during her time in Washington, D.C., Ivanka and Jared Kushner rented a Calorama mansion for $15,000 a month, living among elite neighbors like the Obamas and Jeff Bezos. But it's Ivanka's Miami ventures that truly shine. In 2021, she and Jared purchased a $32 million plot on Indian Creek Island, dubbed the Billionaire's Bunker. Their plans for this exclusive enclave involved building a custom mansion, but in the meantime, they snagged a $24 million waterfront estate. The Mediterranean-style mansion needs renovations, but its 8,500 square feet, high ceilings and lush landscaping offer a glimpse of the grandeur to come. Eric, the quieter Trump sibling, has also embraced luxury real estate. One of his most notable properties is a $3.2 million mansion in Westchester County, New York, close to the family's Seven Springs estate. While less is publicly known, about Eric's real estate portfolio, his penchant for privacy hasn't stopped him from enjoying properties with all the bells and whistles of Trump family standards. Growing up with her mother, Marla Maples, Tiffany's childhood was no less luxurious than her half-siblings. After Marla and Donald divorced in 1999, she purchased a five 770-square-foot Spanish-style mansion in Calabasas, California for $1.349 million. It wasn't Trump Tower, but with five bedrooms, a basketball court, and a pool featuring a water slide and bar, it was still a slice of paradise. By 2013, Marla sold the estate for just over $2 million, turning a near $1 million profit. It marked the end of Tiffany's formative years in a home that was a perfect blend of comfort and extravagance. Barron, the youngest Trump, has enjoyed a unique upbringing. Before the family moved to Mar-a-Lago, Barron lived in Trump Tower with Donald and Melania, where he had an entire floor to himself. Yes, while most kids fight for a bigger bedroom, Barron had a full suite, complete with a chef's kitchen, living area, bedroom, and maid's quarters. The Trump Tower penthouse, valued at $100 million, stretched across three floors and offered views of Central Park. True to Trump style, the interiors were adorned with gold, marble, and more gold. These days, Barron resides at Mar-a-Lago, the family's Palm Beach resort. The sprawling 20-acre estate features 128 rooms, private beaches, polo grounds, and a ballroom decked out with $7 million worth of gold leaf. While members pay up to $200,000 for club membership, Barron enjoys life in a private wing, away from prying eyes. The Trump children grew up in grand style. One of their most memorable childhood homes was the Georgian Mansion in Greenwich, Connecticut, which Donald purchased for $4 million in the 1980s. The property, sitting on six acres, was a playground for the young Trumps, complete with a putting green Cinderella-style staircase and hand-painted murals. After the divorce, Ivana retained the property, living there with the kids for six years before selling it for $15 million. Over the years, the mansion's value skyrocketed, with its most recent listing at a staggering $54 million. Notably, much of the original Trump decor was replaced to appeal to modern buyers. Post-divorce, Ivana relocated to Palm Beach, where she purchased a Mediterranean-style mansion called Concha Marina. The nearly 15,000-square-foot estate featured nine bedrooms, a oh, secret passageway to the beach, and a lotus-shaped swimming pool. Ivana sold it in 2014 for nearly $19 million, calling it quits on a home that had been a sanctuary for her and the kids. Perhaps the most intriguing of Trump family properties is Seven Springs, a historic estate in Westchester County, New York. Purchased by Donald in 1996 for $7.5 million, million, the property spans a jaw-dropping 230 acres and crosses three towns, Bedford, Armonk, and Chappaqua. The 60-room mansion, built in the early 20th century, includes three pools, a guest house, carriage houses, and a mansion for staff. Donald initially planned to turn Seven Springs into a golf course, but local opposition squashed those plans. Instead, the estate became a private family retreat. Hundreds of artisans from around the globe contributed to its European-inspired design, with intricate brickwork and opulent interiors. The Trump children's homes reflect not only their wealth, but also their upbringing in a family where opulence is second nature. From golden penthouses to sprawling estates, their properties serve as monuments to the Trump brand of grandeur. While critics may raise eyebrows at the sheer excess, one thing is undeniable. When it comes to living large, the Trumps are in a league of their own. And if walls could talk, these walls would probably boast about gold accents and million-dollar views. Net Worth
Donald Trump's children have not only inherited his name, but also a significant share of his knack for business, politics, and the limelight. Together, they've amassed a combined fortune that leaves no room for modesty. From executive roles in the Trump Organization to high-profile marriages, each of his five children has carved a unique financial identity. The eldest of the Trump siblings, Donald Trump Jr., has a net worth of approximately $350 million. Much of this fortune stems from his role as an executive vice president at the Trump Organization, where he oversees commercial developments, resorts, and residential projects. But it doesn't stop there. Don Jr. owns about 7% of the Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C., a stake that has significantly bolstered his earnings. Beyond real estate, he's penned two books, Triggered, How the Left Thrives on Hate and Wants to Silence Us and Liberal Privilege, Joe Biden and the Democrats' Defense of the Indefensible, both of which have been successful with his core audience, if that weren't enough public. Speaking gigs and advisory roles on various television shows add an estimated $35 million to his annual income. Though his wealth is undeniable, some may quip that Don Jr. also inherited his father's love for controversy, making headlines just as frequently as he cashes checks. Sharing the same estimated net worth as his older brother, Eric Trump, is equally involved in the Trump Organization as an executive vice president. Like Don Jr., Eric's wealth is tied to his 7% ownership of the Trump International Hotel and other business ventures. However, Eric also earns from his public appearances and works as an advisor on reality TV shows such as The Apprentice. Eric's role extends into philanthropy, as he founded the Eric Trump Foundation to benefit children's hospitals. While his charitable efforts are notable, critics have occasionally scrutinized his financial dealings. Still, with $350 million to his name, Eric seems to be doing just fine, even if he's often viewed as the quieter Trump sibling. Ivanka Trump takes the crown as the wealthiest of Donald Trump's children, with a staggering net worth of $800 million. Unlike her brothers, Ivanka's wealth isn't solely tied to the family business. While she's also an executive vice president at the Trump Organization, she has built an empire of her own. Ivanka's foray into fashion with her Ivanka Trump fine jewelry line and workwear collection was highly lucrative, earning her an estimated $100 million annually at its peak. Though she eventually closed her fashion brand to focus on her political role, her ventures left a lasting financial impact. A significant portion of Ivanka's wealth comes from her marriage to Jared Kushner, a real estate developer with his own fortune. Together, they control a $740 million real estate and investment portfolio. Ivanka has also authored two books, The Trump Card, Playing to Win in Work and Life and Women Who Work, Rewriting the Rules for Success, further solidifying her role as a businesswoman. While her brothers might dominate the real estate headlines, Ivanka's blend of business acumen and branding prowess makes her the true financial heavyweight of the family. Tiffany Trump's financial portfolio is a far cry from her older siblings. With an estimated net worth of $10 million, Tiffany has carved out a quieter existence compared to her family. Her wealth primarily comes from being Donald Trump's daughter and her marriage to Michael Boulos, a Nigerian-American business executive and heir to a billion-dollar family business. Tiffany has dabbled in music, releasing a single called Like a Bird in 2011, though her musical ambitions didn't quite soar. She's also appeared in a few political events speaking at conventions and debates, but her focus has largely been on her legal studies and personal life. While her net worth of $10 million might seem modest by Trump standards, let's face it, she's not exactly struggling. At just 18 years old, Baron Trump's net worth is speculative, but reports suggest he stands to inherit around $80 million, thanks in part to his mother, Melania Trump's renegotiated prenuptial agreement with Donald Trump. Dubbed Little Donald for his striking resemblance to his father, Baron is still years away from stepping into the business world. For now, he enjoys the privileges of being the youngest Trump, including a private school education and a life of luxury. It's safe to say Barron's future financial prospects look as golden as the Trump Tower elevators. Donald Trump's children have also chosen financially well-endowed partners, adding even more wealth to the family tree. Kimberly Guilfoyle, Don Jr.'s fiancé, boasts a net worth of $25 million thanks to her career as an attorney and former Fox News host. Her book, Making the Case, How to Be Your Own Best Advocate and Real Estate Investments, have further boosted her fortune. Lara Trump, Eric's wife, has a net worth of $10 million, a former television producer and host of The Right View, she balances her media career with philanthropic activities. Jared Kushner, Ivanka's husband, shares their $800 million fortune. His wealth stems from real
real estate deals, including Kushner Companies and a private equity firm, Affinity Partners. Jared's influence extends into politics and publishing, with his memoir Breaking History adding to his earnings. Michael Boulos, Tiffany's husband, has a net worth of $20 million. As the CEO of SCOA Nigeria and Boulos Enterprises, Michael is already a seasoned business executive, making him a fitting addition to the Trump family. The Trump family's combined wealth is a testament to their business ventures, strategic marriages, and of course, their famous surname. While Ivanka leads the pack with her entrepreneurial spirit and substantial fortune, her siblings are not far behind, each contributing to the family empire in their own way. Whether it's real estate, publishing, or philanthropy, the Trumps know how to turn opportunities into millions. Still, their wealth comes with its fair share of scrutiny, and public opinion often shadows their accomplishments. Love them or loathe them, there's no denying that the Trumps are as synonymous with wealth as they are with controversy. From the moment Donald Trump steps out of his front door, a carefully orchestrated operation kicks into high gear. Whether he's jetting across the country in one of his lavish private planes, cruising in a convoy of bulletproof vehicles, or boarding the iconic Trump princess, every move is cloaked in secrecy and precision. But what does it take to move a former president with such a massive public profile under the radar? In this video, we're pulling back the layers of Trump's highly secure and ultra-luxurious travel arrangements, from the air to the sea and everything in between. So be prepared to dive into the world of private jets, custom cars, helicopters, and a level of discretion that's nothing short of presidential. Without much ado, let's get started. Trump's private jets. When you think of a flying fortress, you might picture a military aircraft bristling with weapons. But Donald Trump's Boeing 757, famously dubbed Trump Force One, redefines that term with its fusion of luxury, power, and security. Acquired in 2011 for a reported $100 million, this jet is not just a mode of transportation. It's a flying palace designed to offer an unparalleled experience in the skies. Imagine gliding at 30,000 feet, surrounded by opulence that would make a five-star hotel blush, all while being surrounded in a fortress of security. Step inside Trump Force One and it's like walking into a gold-plated dream, literally. The custom-designed interiors are adorned with gold-plated fixtures and intricate wood paneling, creating an atmosphere that screams wealth and power. The spacious cabin is tailored for comfort and exclusivity, carrying just 43 passengers instead of the original 250, ensuring that those on board experience the height of luxury. From the plush carpets underfoot to the elegant lighting overhead, every detail exudes sophistication. It's not just a flight. It's an experience. But let's talk about the crown jewel of this airborne palace, the private bedroom. Forget those cramped airplane seats you're used to. Trump Force One offers a king-sized bed complete with luxurious linens that make you forget your miles above the earth. Need to freshen up? The private bathroom equipped with a shower ensures you can step off the plane as refreshed as if you just left a spa. Imagine having that level of comfort on a transcontinental flight. Who wouldn't want to trade places with Trump even just for a day? Of course, no journey is complete without entertainment, and Trump Force Force One doesn't disappoint. The state-of-the-art entertainment system features large flat-screen TVs, a surround sound system, and a vast library of movies and shows. Whether Trump wants to catch up on the latest news, indulge in a classic film, or perhaps stream the latest episode of The Apprentice, one can only imagine, the options are endless. It's like having a personal cinema in the sky, because why should you settle for less? And then there's the dining experience. Now you might think airplane food is synonymous with bland microwaved meals, but on Trump Force One, the fully equipped kitchen can whip up anything Trump's heart desires, from a well-done steak to fast food favorites. The dining area, with its elegant table settings and comfortable seating, offers the perfect setting for a gourmet meal at 30,000 feet. It's as if a five-star restaurant was transported into the skies, ensuring that every meal is an event in itself. But let's not forget the other side of this flying fortress, security. In a world where safety is paramount, especially for a former president, Trump Force One is equipped with the latest in advanced communication and security systems. Bulletproof windows and a reinforced exterior add an extra layer of safety, turning this jet into a literal flying fortress. Whether Trump is conducting high-stakes business deals or simply enjoying a quiet moment, he can do so with complete peace of mind. After all, when you're Donald Trump, the last thing you want is a bumpy ride, figuratively or literally. Trump's affair with the skies didn't start with this 757, though. Before Trump Force One, there was the Boeing 727, the original flying symbol of Trump's wealth and status. Acquired in 1990, 
1997, this tri-engine airliner was decked out with many of the same luxurious touches, gold-plated seat belts, a private bedroom and a dining area fit for royalty. But with three engines guzzling fuel, the 727 was expensive to operate, costing up to $10,000 an hour to fly. It's no wonder Trump eventually traded it in for the more efficient, but no less luxurious, 757. Who said opulence couldn't be practical? And let's not forget Trump's Cessna Citation X, a nine-seater business jet known for its speed, because when you're Donald Trump, even your plane needs to be the fastest. Acquired in 1997, the Citation X was a regular on Trump's campaign trail, shuttling him between rallies at near supersonic speeds. But even this jet wasn't without its quirks. In 2016, Trump made headlines when he continued flying the Citation X despite an expired registration, a mistake he blamed on the FAA. Despite this hiccup, the Citation X remained a key part of Trump's fleet until it was sold in 2024. Beyond jets, Trump's air fleet also included several Sikorsky S-76 helicopters, which we will talk of later in this video, each one as luxurious as you'd expect. Picture leather seats, gold finishings, and African mahogany wood panels creating a lavish environment that makes even short-haul flights feel like a VIP experience. These choppers, with their Trump branding, were more than just helicopters. They were flying statements of power and style. Today, as Trump vies for the 2024 presidency, Trump Force One remains the crown jewel of his fleet, a symbol of his larger-than-life persona. Whether it's the backdrop for his rallies or the setting for high-level meetings, this iconic jet continues to capture the world's attention. In Donald Trump's world, travel isn't just about getting from point A to point B, it's about making a statement. And with Trump Force One, that statement is loud and clear. Power, luxury, and above all, security. Who wouldn't want to fly like that? But what happens when Trump isn't soaring through the skies? On the ground, his fleet of cars mirrors the same extravagance and attention to detail found on Trump Force One. And so, what are some of these Trump's iconic automobiles? Fleet of cars. First on the list is the iconic Trump limousine, a stretched Cadillac that redefines the word luxury. But don't be fooled by its elegant exterior. This limousine is a fortress on wheels. With armor plating designed to withstand bullets and explosions, it ensures Trump's safety no matter the threat. The tinted windows, they're not just for show. They offer the ultimate in privacy, keeping the world out and his world in. Inside, it's everything you'd expect and more. Plush leather seats, a mini bar stocked with the finest spirits, and state-of-the-art communication systems that allow Trump to conduct business Business, even as he glides through the streets. It's the perfect blend of comfort and functionality, but would you expect anything less? Next, we have Trump's custom-built SUV, a beast of a vehicle designed to conquer both the urban jungle and the great outdoors. This isn't just any SUV. It's a machine equipped with advanced security features like bulletproof glass and reinforced body panels. Picture this. Trump is on his way to a rally and suddenly the road ahead turns to rugged terrain. No problem. This SUV eats rough landscapes for breakfast, ensuring a smooth and secure ride. In Inside, it's a tech lover's dream with satellite phones, entertainment systems, and a cabin spacious enough to stretch out and relax. It's not just about protection, it's about ensuring that Trump travels in comfort and style, no matter where the road or lack thereof takes him. Now let's shift gears to something classic. Trump's Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud is the epitome of timeless elegance. This vintage beauty isn't just a car, it's a piece of automotive history. With its sleek lines and handcrafted interior, the Silver Cloud showcases Trump's appreciation for classic craftsmanship. Imagine Imagine the heads that turn when this car rolls down the street, its very presence a nod to an era when elegance and sophistication ruled the roads. The Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud isn't just about getting somewhere, it's about arriving in style. Speaking of style, let's not forget Trump's Bentley Continental GT. Known for its powerful performance and luxurious interior, this car is a favorite among the elite. The Bentley's handcrafted leather seats and state-of-the-art sound system make it a sanctuary on wheels, but don't be fooled by its serene interior. Under the hood, the Continental GT is a beast, with a powerful engine that offers an exhilarating driving experience. It's a car that perfectly embodies Trump's love for speed and luxury, a combination that's as thrilling as it is sophisticated. Of course, Trump's taste for high performance doesn't end with Bentleys and Rolls Royces. He once owned a Lamborghini Diablo, one of the most iconic supercars ever produced. Sleek, fast, and undeniably bold, the Diablo is a car that commands attention. Although Trump eventually parted ways with this Italian masterpiece, it remains a significant part of his automotive legacy. The Lamborghini Diablo isn't just a car, it's a statement, reflecting Trump's penchant for the extraordinary. And then there's the Mercedes-Benz SLR McLaren, a car that stands out even in Trump's impressive collection. With its Formula One-inspired design and gullwing doors, the SLR McLaren is as powerful as it is beautiful. Under the hood, a supercharged V8 engine roars to life, delivering a driving experience that's nothing short of exhilarating. The Mercedes-Benz SLR. McLaren isn't just another car, it's a testament to Trump's love for cutting 
cutting-edge technology and high-performance engineering, you have to wonder, what's it like to own a car that's both a thrill to drive and a piece of automotive art? But it's not all about speed and luxury. Trump's collection also includes the quirky yet stylish Cadillac Alante, a convertible V8 that Cadillac gifted to him. Painted in Trump's favorite color, gold of course, this car is as much a conversation piece as it is a mode of transportation. The Cadillac Alante, with its sleek design and luxurious interior, reflects Trump's love for vehicles that are unique and full of character. In a surprising twist, Trump also owns a Tesla Roadster, an all-electric sports car that seems at odds with his public stance on climate change. Yet the Tesla Roadster adds an unexpected, eco-friendly touch to his collection. With its sporty design and zero-emission credentials, it showcases a different side of Trump's automotive interests, one that's as innovative as it is unexpected. And just when you think Trump's taste for vehicles couldn't get more extravagant, enter the 24-carat gold Orange County Chopper. This customized motorcycle featuring genuine gold parts is a reflection of Trump's love for opulence. Built by Paul Tootle Sr., co-founder of Orange County Choppers, this bike is as much a work of art as it is a ride. The 24-carat gold chopper is the ultimate expression of luxury and craftsmanship, because why settle for a regular motorcycle when you can have one made of gold? From limousines to motorcycles, Trump's automotive collection is a world of its own. Each vehicle isn't just a mode of transportation, it's a statement, a reflection of Trump's personality and his love for the extraordinary. So the next time you see a sleek limousine or a roaring supercar, ask yourself, what does your car say about you? Because when it comes to Trump, his cars say it all. And speaking of grandeur, Trump's opulent lifestyle isn't confined to the seas. When it comes to air travel, his fleet of helicopters rivals his jets and yachts in both luxury and functionality. Let's take a closer look at how Trump's yacht embody a seamless blend of agility, luxury and strategic precision. Trump Princess on the open seas, Donald Trump sails in style aboard the Trump Princess, a majestic vessel that is the epitome of his lavish lifestyle. This yacht isn't just any boat, it's a floating palace, a reflection of wealth, power and the relentless pursuit of luxury. But before Trump made this masterpiece his own, it had already lived a life as grand as any tale spun by the world's richest. The story of this opulent yacht begins with Adnan Khashoggi, a Saudi arms dealer who was as notorious for his extravagant lifestyle as he was for his powerful connections. In the 1970s, Khashoggi commissioned the renowned British designer John Bannenberg to create the most sumptuous yacht the world had ever seen. The result was Nabila, an 86-meter masterpiece that cost over $35 million to build. Yet the true extravagance lay not just in its size but in its interior, which was designed by Italian maestro Luigi Sturcio. Imagine a vessel so lavish that its interior cost more than the yacht itself. Named after Khashoggi's only daughter, Nabila was launched in 1980 and was a marvel of engineering and opulence. It was designed to be totally self-contained, featuring everything from a patisserie and a three-chair hair salon to a screening room with an 800-film library and even a hospital with an operating theatre. This wasn't just a yacht, it was a floating empire. With a crew of 52, a helicopter landing pad and a pair of 9-meter tenders for easy shore access, Nabila was the ultimate status symbol. He could cruise at 17.5 knots, covering 8,500 nautical miles on a single tank and produced 45,000 litres of fresh water daily. Just think of it. Khashoggi could host a three month-long party for 100 guests without ever needing to dock. And party he did. Nabila was not just a symbol of wealth, it was also an invaluable business instrument. Khashoggi hosted some of the world's most lavish gatherings aboard this yacht, inviting movie stars, political leaders and diplomats. Imagine the scene. Five heads of state, including three kings, being entertained simultaneously in suites equipped with 150 telephones and a satellite communications system. Deals were made, arms were sold, and when contracts were ready to be signed, the yacht would slip into international waters, where sovereign restrictions on business transactions didn't apply. Talk about doing business in style, but as the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. When Khashoggi's empire began to crumble in the mid-1980s, he found himself in need of a $50 million loan. He put up Nabila as collateral, but when he defaulted, the yacht was repossessed by a Swiss holding company. They instructed Burgess, a yacht brokerage firm, to sell it quickly. Enter Donald Trump, who upon learning that Nabila was for sale, made a cash bid for the yacht. Two other offers were on the table but Trump's decisive $30 million bid won out, despite the fact that he had never even set foot on the yacht. How's that for confidence? Trump wasted no time in making Nabila his own. He spent $8.5 million having the yacht refitted in the Netherlands by Amos. The hull was repainted, the main engines rebuilt, and 320 meters of chamois leather were replaced. One of the more garish cabins was transformed into a children's room, and the hair salon became a cloakroom. Renamed Trump Princess, the yacht set sail from the 
Azores in June 1988 and arrived in New York on July 4th, just in time for a huge party thrown by the Trumps. The Trump Princess is a floating fortress of luxury. The walls of its cabins are covered in chamois leather and bird's eye maple. The bathrooms are adorned with hand-carved onyx, crafted by the finest Italian artisans. The Ruby Suite, one of the more extravagant staterooms, boasts a tortoiseshell ceiling, a three-meter wide bed, and a secret exit. Because who doesn't need a secret exit on their yacht? The owner's suite includes a mirrored dressing room, an onyx bathroom with a sunburst pattern on the floor tiles, a barber chair, and a shower with 13 nozzles carved in the shape of a scallop shell. There's even a sauna and a private elevator that leads to a sun deck with a bar, pantry, video games, and a circular swimming pool behind bulletproof glass. If that's not the definition of over-the-top luxury, what is? Of course, Trump didn't just use the Trump princess for private cruising with his family. The yacht spent the summer months cruising the East Coast, docking at the marina in Atlantic City in full view of Trump's Castle Hotel. The yacht was made available to selected charities and very high rollers who spend millions of dollars a year in the casinos. It was a spectacular statement of astronomical wealth, designed to inspire envy in all who beheld it. In the end, the Trump princess isn't just a yacht, it is a symbol. It is a massive piece of equipment, huge enough to intimidate even the owners of other big yachts. It is a floating reflection of the power, wealth and unapologetic luxury that defined Donald Trump's life. And really, isn't that what we all want? A life so grand that even our toys are too big to play with. And speaking of, grandeur, Trump's opulent lifestyle isn't confined to the seas. When it comes to air travel, his fleet of helicopters rivals his jets and yachts in both luxury and functionality. Helicopters. Taking to the skies in style, Donald Trump's helicopters embody a seamless blend of agility, luxury, and strategic precision, a perfect reflection of the man himself. In a world where time is money and safety is paramount, the former president's choice of helicopters over traditional modes of transport isn't merely about convenience. It's a calculated decision, ensuring his security and the discretion required for someone of his stature. But these aren't just any helicopters. They're flying fortresses designed to keep Trump ahead of the curve and above the fray, both literally and figuratively. One of the crown jewels in Trump's aerial fleet is the Sikorsky S-76, a marvel of modern engineering that epitomizes the fusion of comfort and security. Imagine cruising through the clouds with a whisper-quiet cabin, thanks to cutting-edge noise reduction technology, where the hum of the rotors barely disturbs a private conversation or the peaceful tranquility of a high-altitude journey. For someone like Trump, who needs to juggle sensitive discussions and high-stakes decisions even while in transit, this quiet sanctuary is more than a luxury. It's a necessity. But let's not pretend it's all about business. Step inside the Sikorsky S-76 and you're greeted by an interior that screams opulence. The spacious cabin is outfitted with panoramic windows, offering a bird's eye view of the world below, a reminder of the power and influence that Trump's name commands. Plush seating, tailored to perfection, ensures that every journey is as comfortable as it is stylish. And of course, no Trump ride would be complete without top-of-the-line entertainment systems, ensuring that he's never far from the latest news or a quick distraction even miles above the ground. Yet despite all the luxury, what truly sets Trump's helicopters apart is their rapid response capability. In a world where situations can change in an instant, Trump's ability to swiftly move from one location to another is crucial. Whether it's hopping between meetings or making a quick getaway in the face of danger, the Sikorsky S-76 can take off and land almost anywhere, adding an unmatched level of flexibility to his travel plans. It's not just a ride, it's a tactical advantage, a way for Trump to always stay. One step ahead. Speaking of staying ahead, security is an ever-present concern for someone of Trump's profile. Helicopters offer a unique edge in this regard. Imagine a scenario where the skies are the only safe haven, allowing for rapid extraction from any location at the first sign of trouble. These aerial vehicles can land in secure, undisclosed locations, making it nearly impossible for potential threats to track his movements. In an emergency, the ability to extract and protect Trump at a moment's notice isn't just important, it's life-saving. And then there's the element of deception because what's a high-stakes game without a little misdirection? Enter the decoy helicopters. To ensure Trump's safety, multiple identical helicopters often take to the skies, each indistinguishable from the other. This tactic, known as helicopter decoying, isn't just a clever trick. It's a well-honed strategy used in high-security operations. It's almost cinematic. Can you imagine trying to guess which helicopter is the real one as they dart through the skies? It adds an air of mystery to Trump's travels that feels straight out of a spy thriller. Trump's helicopters aren't confined to America 
Russian airspace either. During his 2018 visit to the United Kingdom, he opted to travel between London and his Scottish golf course via helicopter, bypassing the congested roads and maintaining a tight security bubble. The logistics of such international helicopter travel are nothing short of extraordinary, involving coordination with local authorities and meticulous planning. It's a spectacle of precision where even the smallest detail is scrutinized to ensure everything goes off without a hitch. Behind the scenes, a dedicated team of pilots, security personnel and support staff work tirelessly to execute these journeys flawlessly. The pilots, seasoned professionals with extensive experience flying high-profile individuals, undergo rigorous training to handle any situation that might arise mid-flight. The security team conducts thorough checks of the helicopter and its surroundings before every takeoff, using advanced surveillance equipment to scan for potential threats. Meanwhile, the support staff ensures that everything from refueling to catering runs smoothly, guaranteeing that each flight is as seamless as possible. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, the cost. Running a fleet of state-of-the-art helicopters doesn't come cheap. The Sikorsky S-76, for example, carries a price tag of around $15 million, not to mention the ongoing maintenance and operational costs that run into the millions annually. It's an expense that only a select few can afford, and yet, for Trump, it's a small price to pay for the convenience, security and luxury these helicopters provide. So why helicopters? Why the extravagant costs, the elaborate security measures and the relentless precision in planning? Because for Donald Trump, every moment is an opportunity to stay ahead, to outmaneuver and to remain unassailable. His helicopters aren't just a mode of transport, they're a statement, a fortress in the sky and a testament to the lengths he'll go to protect his empire. Who wouldn't want to fly high surrounded by luxury with the world at their feet and the sky as the limit? Yet besides the fleet of cars, helicopters, private jets and even Trump's yacht, there's one piece still missing to make the puzzle complete. Yes, we are talking about his security. For the record, Trump can't take laid-back trips or vacations just like you and me. So be sure to spot a few guys always around him. He must be protected at all costs. Security and discretion. When it comes to the secretive and extraordinary travel arrangements of Donald Trump, the security measures involved are nothing short of cinematic. Imagine a blockbuster movie where the hero is constantly under the watchful eye of highly trained, discreet and elite security personnel who seamlessly blend into the background yet are always a heartbeat away from action. This is no fiction. It's the real-life scenario crafted by the US Secret Service to ensure that Trump remains as safe as a king in his castle. But who are these guardians? Picture this. A team of agents so elite they make regular security security guards look like amateurs. These men and women are hand-picked from the creme de la creme, known not only for their physical prowess and sharp instincts, but also for their ability to maintain an unwavering calm under pressure. Trump himself is said to have a penchant for agents who are, shall we say, easy on the eyes. Because when you're one of the world's most scrutinized figures, even your bodyguards have to fit the image. If they don't measure up, they're out. It's like a reality show, but with a lot more at stake. Now let's talk about the tech. Ever wonder what's behind the dark-tinted windows of Trump's vehicles or the seam endless motorcade that zips through traffic. It's not just bulletproof glass or reinforced armor, though those are certainly in the mix. The real magic lies in the advanced surveillance and communication systems embedded into every car, plane, and even golf cart Trump uses. Think of it as a mobile command center with real-time GPS tracking, encrypted communication channels that would make a spy thriller proud, and surveillance equipment capable of spotting and neutralizing threats before they even materialize. It's a game of high-stakes chess where every move is anticipated and every countermeasure is in place. Air travel, however, is where things get really interesting. Picture this, Trump's personal Boeing 757 soaring through the skies, not just as a luxurious mode of transport, but as a flying fortress. The Secret Service coordinates with the FAA, TSA, and a host of other agencies to ensure every flight is as secure as Fort Knox. This jet isn't just about comfort, it's equipped with the latest in aviation security, including encrypted communication systems and, believe it or not, anti-missile defenses. The flight path, meticulous meticulously planned, with alternate routes and emergency landing sites prepped and ready just in case. One wrong move, and there's a backup plan for the backup plan. But what happens when Trump is on the ground? Enter the motorcade, a rolling fortress where each vehicle has a role to play in this well-rehearsed symphony of security. The pilot car leads the way, scouting the route for potential threats, while the package vehicle where Trump sits is shielded by an entourage of decoys and support units. It's not just about moving from point A to point B, it's about doing so while being prepared for anything, with 
constant communication back to the command center, ensuring every second is accounted for and every possible threat is monitored. And when things go south, enter the safe houses, those undisclosed strategically placed fortresses along Trump's travel route. Think of them as the superhero's lair, ready to offer refuge at a moment's notice. These aren't your average bunkers. They're equipped with everything from essential supplies to advanced medical facilities, ensuring that Trump can be protected and even treated if the unthinkable happens. Imagine the scene, a swift retreat to an unknown location where Trump is cocooned in safety until the threat is neutralized. But it doesn't stop there. The Secret Service's security web also includes counter-surveillance measures straight out of a spy novel. Electronic jamming devices check. Undercover agents who can blend into the crowd while keeping a sharp eye on potential threats double check. These agents are trained to spot everything from a would-be assassin to a cyber attack, ensuring that no stone is left unturned in the mission to keep Trump safe. And behind all this high-tech wizardry lies a backbone of good old-fashioned human intelligence. The Secret Service isn't just about gadgets and guns, it's about staying two steps ahead of any threat. This means gathering intel from informants, monitoring social media for the faintest hint of danger, and working hand-in-glove with other law enforcement agencies. The goal? To neutralize threats before they even get close to Trump. But here's the kicker, the price tag. Protecting Trump is not just a logistical marvel, it's an expensive one. In just a year, the Secret Service has racked up over $1.3 million in hotel and transportation bills alone. That includes nearly $800,000 on hotel rooms, close to $300,000 on rental cars, and over $260,000 on air and rail travel. If you thought keeping a former president safe was as simple as having a few bodyguards, think again. It's a well-oiled machine that spares no expense, because in this game, there's no such thing as too much caution. So next time you see that motorcade whizzing by, or that private jet soaring overhead, remember, it's not just about getting from one place to another. It's about orchestrating a symphony of security measures, each more complex than the last, all designed to keep one man safe. And you can bet that the Secret Service is ready to do whatever it takes to ensure that Trump remains untouchable. After all, in their line of work, there's no such thing as too careful. If you enjoyed watching this video, check out our other awesome videos on the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.